seeing moths in your lawn? No matter where you live across the U.S. or what your grass type is, here in early summer, you may be seeing them zip around as you mow or walk through your grass. Question is, are they just an annoyance or can they cause any damage? And what about their evil larval children? Hit that like button and let's jump into it. So I'll cut right to the chase here. If you're seeing moths in your lawn here in the early summer, it's probably either sod webworm or cutworm. And if you're seeing moths in the lawn towards the fall, it might be a later stage of sod webworm because they can have several generations during the year, or it could be armyworm. Either way, they're all similar and the treatment strategy is the same. Now the moths are the adults and you're most likely to see them during the day hiding out in taller stands of grass in shady areas, or maybe where you have some weed growth or where you have a lot of plants. But the idea is that during the hot summer days, they're hiding in the shade, waiting for cooler temperatures to prevail. And the first thing I wanna tell you is these moths, they cause no damage to the lawn. You do not have to treat for the moths, but there is a reason that you should treat, and that's what we're gonna get into now. I recently found an outbreak of damage from sod webworm in this section of my lawn back here. But again, it wasn't the moths that caused the damage. They lay eggs, those eggs hatch, and they become worms or caterpillars, and it's those worms that cause the damage. Let me show you what I found. So the main reason for this video, and you probably can see it, can you see patches in the lawn that are discolored? They're not necessarily brown, but they're discolored. You might, it's overcast and cloudy. You can, you can definitely see it a lot better when the sun is out, but I, you can see them, I'm sure. There's some right in there. Now what you do first, you would think, is that that's brown patch, Rhizoctonia. Oh my gosh, look at all the weeds. I have totally neglected this, but I was neglecting it for another video on edging. A good experiment came up. So what these patches are, they're not brown patch, they're not Rhizoctonia. This is why it's so important when you see a spot or something to get down in and dig and look. Check out what I found. So here, let's just go to a spot right here. Now again, I've got, this is uh, Bermuda, wild Bermuda invading right here. So don't worry about this. I can take care of that. But coming down in here, and I'll take some stills. Can you see how the grass blades are eaten? Look. It's like sawed off. Can you see that? Whenever you have a brown spot or a spot that's struggling, the first thing you wanna do is go to your healthy part of your lawn, right where it borders the hurt part or the damaged part and see what you notice is different. So if you come over here, that's actually bird poop on there. <laughs> but you can see the grass blades are healthy here. You know, this is a nice, pretty, normal looking blade of St. Augustine grass. By the way, one month of growth, look, not, not that much. This is bred to grow slow and they don't lie about it. But now let's go over here to the damaged part. And what you can see is like, look at this. The grass blades are eaten down. Can you see that? Like that used to be a grass blade. It's just been sawed down. And I have, this hasn't been cut, it's sawed down. Now I know what this is. And the reason I know what it is is because I've been seeing a lot of moths in the lawn. And when you see moths in the lawn, it's not always a bad thing, but it is a clue that you're probably gonna be dealing with some sort of sod webworm. In my case, it's tropical sod webworm. And the only reason I know that is, is I, I can catch one of the moths and show you. But for the most part, if you have moths in your lawn and you see quite a few of them zipping around, and then you start seeing dead patches like this, it's a sign that you probably have a sod webworm problem. So you know my name is Simon and I love to do draw rings. And so I'm gonna take you through the life cycle here of sod webworm. Now there's a couple things to keep in mind. The first is, is that these are tropical sod webworms down here in Florida. So they may have five or six generations throughout the year, whereas up north, the further you get, there may only be two, possibly three generations a year if you have a mild fall. The other thing to realize is that the final generation of the year will survive over winter and come out again in May or June of the following season. As mentioned earlier, the adult moths do not cause problems, but when you see them in greater numbers, it means very soon you may have damage occurring. Here's a picture someone sent me on Twitter of what the eggs look like in his lawn. And then here in my lawn, I was able to actually find and identify some of the caterpillars. Okay, now here's a sod webworm. See him there? If I disturb him, he'll start running. He's still asleep from nighttime, I guess. He's probably full. He's probably feeding all night. There he goes. Now he's like, uh-oh, who's looking at me? I better run. 
And I found a couple others too. Now he's like, oh boy, this doesn't feel like, this doesn't feel like the grass that I've been eating. <laughs> he's like trying to hold on to his last bastion of his home. Now he's like, all right, time to run for the hills, boys. Where am I? Oh no, a cliff. Go back this way. Notice how they're green? That's because they've been chewing on my grass. Now I like to dig in my lawn. I think that's a very healthy thing to do and it's part of learning your land. But if you're digging during the heat of the day, you may not find them because they do go down deep, but you may find some of their frass or poo, which is another indication that feeding is happening. I was also able to find pupa in my lawn, which will continue the life cycle here very soon. I'll try to do this the best I can, but these things will actually start moving. In my area in the middle of the summer, it takes about 35 or 40 days to go from egg to caterpillar to pupa and out to adult moth. Up north, because you have winter, these generations are shortened and sometimes that total life cycle can be just 21 days. Now that footage is obviously here in Florida and that's St. Augustine grass, but let me show you my turf type tall fescue in Northwest Indiana over by there from several years ago. I actually had some sod webworm damage there as well. Hey guys, Alan Hain here, the Lawn Care Nut with another lawn tip. Now today we're gonna to talk about an insect that attacks lawns here in the Midwest and really throughout most of the country, including Florida. We're gonna talk about sod webworms. Now sod webworm is kind of an overall term used for a lot of different caterpillars that attack lawns, but generally they're going to start feeding in the spring. They overwinter and then in the spring they come up and they begin to feed, but you don't really notice the problem at that point because your lawn is vigorously growing in the spring and it kind of outgrows any damage. However, when we get to summertime, the lawn growth will typically slow down or even stop as the lawn goes into summer dormancy. And when that happens, these caterpillars or sod webworms continue to feed. However, you don't necessarily notice the damage because of the fact that your lawn's already brown from being dormant. Once the lawns begin to green up in late August and September when temperatures come down a little bit and we get some moisture, that's when the damage is noticed. And you'll see here, here are a couple of Kentucky bluegrass lawns that have been completely decimated by sod webworm. Here's another one. This is bent grass. And this one has also been severely damaged from sod webworm. So if you're seeing moths flying up, and not one or two, but quite a few as you mow or walk through the lawn, that means you probably should treat. Let's go into some strategies now. The good news here is, is pretty much every insect control that you can get over the counter or on Amazon or wherever, it kills sod webworms. The reason I bring that up is because you have a myriad of choices to go after the sod webworm. So what I recommend is whatever choice you make, is make one that's gonna actually go after other things, not just sod webworms. Since everything kills them, why don't you see what other concerns you have in your lawn and choose a product that's gonna cure those and the sod webworm at the same time. Now the next thing that people are gonna ask is, well, is it better to use a liquid or a granular treatment? And I'm just gonna tell you right now, for sod webworm, and really for most surface insects, not subsurface, but surface insects, liquid is the way to go when it comes to lawns. You can see here on this bag, they're showing you, for example, subsurface, crane fly larva, grubs, mole crickets, and then above ground, ants, mosquitoes, chinch bug, and yes, sod webworm. Now we'll talk a little bit about the marketing wank that's on all these packages. You always though need to read the label, and that's what I recommend you do. Of course, the primary subsurface insect that you guys will know about is grubs, and down here in the south, mole crickets, which are a whole nother deal. But let me just show you why I recommend, if you're going after surface, either feeding insects like these sod webworm, or surface, pest insects like ants, fleas, and spiders, and ticks, let me show you why liquid just works better. It's pretty logical, actually. I hope you're gonna be able to see this, but see I have a few grains here. Watch what happens when I put them on here, ready? I'll just drop them. So you see the coverage there, right? Now let me just show you what liquid coverage looks like. I'm gonna clean this up first, though. Okay, so I just have a nondescript liquid in here, but look at this coverage. So you can see complete coverage. So which one of those looks like it's gonna do better to you? 
to me it's the liquid. It's complete coverage versus spotty coverage that you have to hope water hits and then it gets down in there. This is complete coverage immediately, a complete coating. Just think of it like coating those bugs. Now in the interest of being thorough, let me throw in this one caveat. The thing that matters the most is what you can make a good, solid, consistent, proper application with. If you are actually more comfortable with granular products and you're gonna be able to make a better application with that because that's where all of your experience is at, then for sure granular products are better for you. However, if you're somebody that's experienced in both and you feel like you can do a proper application in both, that's when you choose to go with liquid and get a little bit better, faster, more consistent, more even, more coated results. The point there is, is the most important thing in making an application is that you do it according to what the label instructs and you get the product out according to the label's directions. That matters most before anything else. Now this next part, we're gonna get into like the marketing and everything. You can see that this product here, this is from Sunnyland, you'll find this in the south. This is marketed for chinch bug and the active ingredient is Lambda Sciahalothrin. The reason they label it for chinch bug is they know that that's a problem in Florida so people will go to the store specifically looking for something to kill chinch bug. However, when you flip it over and read the label, and this one's a little crusty because I've had it for a while, there it is, sod webworm. But look, cut worms, earwigs, fleas, grasshopper, Japanese beetle, pill bugs, all kinds of stuff. Kills a lot of different things. If you are gonna stick with granular, here's another one. I actually like this product a lot. This is the Bear Complete Insect Killer. And the reason I like this one is because it kills above ground and below ground insects. And you can see that here in their marketing wank. See, soil insects for up to three months, surface insects. The reason why here, we have active ingredient imidacloprid, which is well known for a grub preventative. That's why it'll last three months. And then Cyfluthrin, which is the above ground killer. You can see mosquitoes, chinch bug, ants. Flip the bag over, sod webworm. So this is a great product. I'll link in the description below to where you can pick that one up. Now I go liquids. And the reason I go liquids is because I like to use the liquid to spray in other areas where I can't put a granular. For example, on my house, perimeter pest control, three feet up, three feet out into the beds. I'll spray up around the eaves where I get bugs and insects and things like that. You can't do that with a granular. So that's another reason why I always go liquid. Now when you go liquid, you might wanna look at something like this, triazicide, you've seen this. This is a hose-in sprayer option. Some of you uh, really like that. Just know these come out really fast. And uh, there is a sight glass on the side of it. But if it says it cut, but you have to really move with these depending on your water pressure. But look, so you can see active ingredient, gamma salahiathrin, which is the same we found on this Sunnyland granular product over there. Here it is on a liquid. And once again, on the label, sod webworm. And you can see they even have that on their marketing, sod webworm, fleas, ticks. Now, it says grubs on here. It is not a grub preventative. I know it says up to three months control, but there's a little bit of a asterisk there. That's actually for ants. It gives you three month control on ants, not grubs. That's another reason why it's important to read the label. But again, we're not talking about grubs in this video. We're talking about sod webworm and that'll wipe them out as well as the fleas, the ticks, the ants. Mosquitoes, another big one that you guys are concerned about. Pretty much all of this stuff is gonna kill mosquitoes as well. Not to belabor this point, but here is a liquid concentrate, seven. This is very well known. You can spray this in gardens and everywhere else. You do not see sod webworm on here. The reason I bring this one up though is because some of you really like to use your ortho dial -in spray. And this particular formulation is labeled to be used with a dial style hose-in sprayer. I wanna stop and say something right here again in the interest of being thorough and detailed. You should never spray an eyed out of a hose and sprayer unless it's labeled to be sprayed that way. What I mean by IDES are pesticides. Those are products that are designed to kill something or alter its growth pattern. So I'm talking about herbicides which kill weeds or plants. Maybe I'm talking about insecticides which we're talking about here that kill bugs. We might be talking about fungicides that kill or stop or alter the growth pattern or the manifestation of fungus. You do not apply those things through a hose and sprayer unless it's on the label. And so that's why I broke out the seven concentrate today because this will get rid of sod webworm if you wanna stick with your hose and sprayer there as well as it kills a whole host of other insects around your garden, your plants, your lawn. So I will be doing an application with that today to show you how that's done. I'm gonna actually do liquid and granular applications in this video to show you how it's done so you can choose the way that you wanna execute. But for me, in treating insects in the lawn, and in this case, sod webworm, and then also with the consideration that I'm gonna kill other insects or have other you know, nuisance pests wiped out at the same time, 
the number one active ingredient that I go for is bifenthrin. Bifenthrin is an active ingredient. Now, there's also a brand name you might see called Tallstar, but there's no need to pay for that brand. You can get generics. You wanna look for bifenthrin 7.9% concentration. Let me show you a couple ways I found it. This is a three quarter gallon bifenthrin 7.9%. This is obviously if you have a lot of square footage to do. This is, I found this on Amazon and I'll link it below. And then this is the exact same product, Bifenthrin, 7.9%, just packaged a little differently. And this is in a smaller one pint container and it comes with the tip and pour, which makes measuring a little bit easier. All right, y'all, thanks for watching all the way to the end of the video, but I've got more for you because that right there just ends the first portion of this video, which is all about strategies to get rid of sod webworms. Well, first to identify sod webworms, understand their life cycle, and then understand the products that you could use to make a good choice to get rid of them. In the next video, I'm gonna actually show you how to execute on the strategy and apply three different ways. Granular, concentrate in an ortho hosen sprayer, and then applying concentrates that you mix and spray with a pump sprayer. I figure I'd make that a separate video so this one doesn't end up being an entire 30 minutes long. One other thing here real quick before you go, I know there's a lot of you in the audience that are lawn professionals, meaning you spray or treat or apply to lawns for a living. You're an applicator. I know you guys watch these videos because I actually meet people often at conferences or at GIE that tell me, hey, I actually learned how to spray by watching your videos or even more often than I hear people will say, I actually use your videos to train my lawn technicians. And I think that is awesome. But I wanted to offer you a better resource than me when it comes to the overall understanding of the lawn care business. I have a friend, his name is Brian Fullerton. I'm sure you have seen his YouTube channel, Brian's Lawn Maintenance. I'll link that in the description below. But he's also got a podcast that he's launched and it's called Fullerton Unfiltered. Now it's a podcast rather than being on video so you can kind of listen to it while you're out doing your work and all that. But he's gonna give you all kinds of, not only just business advice and nuts and bolts stuff, but motivation. He's gonna tell you the truth about certain things that he sees and the way that he sees them. And I think it would be excellent content Content for you if you're somebody that's working on growing your career here in the green industry. I'll link his podcast in the description below. So with that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Stay tuned for part two coming up where we're actually going to apply and kill these little buggers, and I'll see you in the lawn. Bye.